I have some fear of height, so that's why I was looking up there and said, okay, I'll go over there. But, uh, my dear brothers and sisters, Excellency Bishop uh, Nicolas de Matsu, Bishop uh, Guy Sansarik, Reverend Fathers, Sisters, Mga Kababayang Pinoy, and my friend Sarah, Asian Dalek Priest. We are a few days away from Christmas, and again, we are revisited by a kind of Christmas panic attack. But it might be the only panic attack that we love to welcome, because for us, who believe in Christ, the one who is to come, this busy time is not, or at least not primarily for shopping. It is about more for us, an occasion to be evangelized, to evangelize ourselves, and to be evangelizers. And at the same time, therefore, a time of grace to grow and mature in our faith. So in the midst of everyone's Christmas schedule, I know everyone is busy at this time of the year, but at least uh, you have still find, found time to organize this Mass as uh, a welcome, as a gesture of welcome for me. I would like to thank Above all, Bishop Rimasu, for inviting me to celebrate this Mass with you this evening. I would like to thank you for taking time to come and celebrate the Mass with us. Maraming salamat po, mga kapatid ni Cristo, may siyempi, ang ifwa, may mercy. Our beloved Holy Father, decided to pull me out of Haiti a few months ago after my six years of being people meets you to Haiti. I hope that it was not because the Haitians wanted me out. And then he decided to send me back to New York to the United Nations. I was here before in 2006-2008 and now I'm back as the head of our mission to the United Nations. What is this mission all about? Certainly my primary objective, my primary duty is to represent our Holy Father and in general the Catholic Church before this international organization we call the United Nations. So we are given the task to share, to bring to the concert of nations our values, our experience of humanity, and also to learn from them, to learn from other people in this exchange, sometimes we call it debates, exchange of opinions. We know that in our contemporary, present-day cultural trends, culture of individualism, culture of relativism, our mission certainly is very challenging. We know that a number of our core values have been challenged uh, by we might say competing values. For instance, the family. Yes, we know that the family has been undergoing a transformation, a crisis. And part of the crisis is that there are powerful countries and organizations pushing that family should be changed. That instead of a husband, wife, and children, anybody could form a family without preference anymore to male or female. 
So these are the kind of debates that we face also the United Nations. Of course, the primary objective of the United Nations, as you know, the reason for which it was funded is to spare us from another world war. The United Nations was founded immediately after the Second World War to spare us from new scourges of war. Even in the primary objective, we as a church, we as a mission of the Holy See and of the Catholic Church in general, we try and we do contribute our own values, our own vision of peace. So my dear brothers and sisters, in celebrating this Mass with you, in welcoming me through this Mass, I do ask for your prayers. Your prayers that we who work at the mission of the Holy See to the United Nations be able to perform the mission that the Holy Father has entrusted us. I can accomplish this mission only with your prayers and with your support. Brothers and sisters, in a few days, we will be celebrating Christmas. We Filipinos, we have a very long, very old, centuries-old tradition of a novena of Masses before Christmas. We call it Simbangabe, or Misanidale, because it was celebrated at dawn. This has become for us a very valid tool of evangelization and personal renewal. We look forward to Christmas also because we look forward to celebrating this series of Masses. Even today, after more than 500 years of practice, this devotion of the Novena Masses before Christmas is still a very valid tool of evangelization. Thanks to our devotion, thanks to our perseverance, thanks to our witnessing, the Simbanga de Masses have become slowly a part of the religious Catholic mainstream practices, we might say, in the United States of America. As immigrant people, I think we should rejoice in that, that even our culture, so far away from here, is being accepted and has become an important instrument of evangelization. It is very important to underline for us the aspect of being able to pass on our faith to younger generations. I say it is important because, as we have learned and we have experienced, the transmission of our faith has been suffering a crisis. It seems that the faith has lacked. And then parents or grandparents have experienced difficulties of transmitting this faith to the younger generation. We say, of course, cultures have changed. Circumstances have changed. These are the new signs of the times. And to these new signs of the times, we as a church must be able to respond adequately so that faith will live on in future generations. We know that many of our core values are rejected or vigorously challenged by new cultures and new circumstances. There are, there is a world out there characterized by injustices, characterized by inequalities. And even we Christians, even we Catholics, we have not been always good witnesses. Even we bishops and priests have procured scandals for the church. And we faithful, we have lost that energy to preach the gospel through our lives. We have this important document of the Holy Father, the joy of the gospel. 
have we succeeded in showing our joy because of our faith to others? It is important, certainly, that if you want the younger generations to enjoy and to be joyful in that faith, we must be the first ones to rejoice in that faith. So we are these realities in front of us changed sometimes radically that we older people we sometimes take refuge in this phrase it was better in my time as a young person we were a better generation than the generations now or in the future might be true but certainly it would not help a lot in transmitting the joy of our faith to future generations. We must be able to seize all the new opportunities in order to be able to transmit that faith. We know that the practice of the faith in our times is very difficult. It is true that we are surrounded with so many wonderful technological things. I'm not saying that they are bad. They are good. Even the Holy Father twitters a lot. And he also does selfies. Your very young children know much about technology than you. But everybody seems to be busy. It is so stressful to live in the present world. We find it harder to organize our knowledge. We don't find time anymore to organize our thoughts. Families can hardly find time to be together. And if they are together, they don't even realize the presence of one another because the mother is busy with Twitter, the daughter is busy with Facebook, the son is busy with Xbox, or an iPad on the other hand, in an iPhone on the other, there is no more hand for the rosary or the Bible. These are the times that we live in, and these are the challenges that grows us, that pushes us, and that push us to be more inventive on how to transmit and how to maintain faith above all in our lives. And finally, there is another circumstance, there is another element for us Filipinos and Christians. We are migrant people here. Migration is, in a sense, neutral. And it is good in itself. You know that migration could mean freedom to so many. It could mean better economic opportunities. It could mean freedom from want, freedom from hunger. It could mean knowing other peoples and cultures. But we also know and we are aware that being uprooted from our original context also carries with it the risk of losing our identity, of losing our culture, of losing our religious practices. So mga kababayan, mga Filipinos, have we been able, for instance, to transmit our devotion to the Santo Nino, to Our Lady Wanticol, to our Mestre Signora de Pina Francia, and all these nice religious practices that we have to younger generations. You Haitians, have you been able to transmit your devotion to the Mother Perpetual Help, Notre Dame de Perpetual Sucru, Patrona Sinabaiti, to your younger generations? These are the challenges also that we have to face. In a few days, we will celebrate Christmas. We say, Christ is born to us. But what usefulness would it have that Christ was born <coughs> once upon a time in Bethlehem, but He is not reborn in our hearts now? It would just be a simple history for us. It is not faith. It is not living faith. So my prayer for you, brothers and sisters, is that 
these preparations for Christmas. May help us beget the Lord once again in our hearts so that He may forever live in us this Christmas and forever. I wish you a blessed Christmas and wonderful, prosperous 2015. God bless you.
nourished with the bread of heaven through Christ our Lord. Thank <laughs> you. 
especially grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ.
Thank you. 